hunk of butternut that's been sitting in the corner of the shop waiting for me to do something with. And I think today's the day. A crack here. Most of the pith was cut out, but that's just a little bit of left over there. That shouldn't hurt me because I think I'm going to take this over to the bandsaw and cut this off so that I have solid wood for the bottom. This will be the bottom, this will be the top, and then we'll just see, you know, how far down we have to get to cut this bit out. But we should still be able to get a good sized bowl out of this chunk. So how, how dry is this thing? Had it for almost 10, so we should be good. Let me go wax some of this off. That's too tall for my bandsaw. Hold on, I gotta go cut it with a chainsaw. All right, so I have the bottom. Well, it isn't pretty, but I got rid of the bark inclusion that was down there. This is gonna be the bottom. I cut some of this out. I pulled out whatever I can. Some of that might still come out, but I'll be aware of that and be careful. Um, this is gonna be the top. So I'm gonna drill a hole for a wormwood screw right about here-ish, yes. This is my half inch gouge with the 4040 grind on it. At some point I'm going to get either another 5 8 or a 3 quarter inch gouge and put a 4040 on that. My 5 8 bowl gouge that I have right now has a 60 degree, it's not really a fingernail because I've swept the wings back, but it's a 60 degree bevel angle and then I have another smaller hurricane that has that same grind. And then I have two more hurricanes that have a 55 degree swept back. I wasn't sure if I was going to use a mortise with the 100 millimeter jaws or the 50, so I marked them both out. And I decided it's going to look better with the 100 millimeter jaws. And here I'm just making a little indentation for where my sticker is going to go. Using the Nova dovetail tool, you really shouldn't have to worry about whether or not your mortise is shaped right, but it's just kind of a habit for me that I check frequently. stuff there. There's a discount code in the description. If you're running low, I'm just going to stick some down in these cracks. Don't know 
if any of these are gonna be an issue or not, but while we're still working on it, I am gonna take this down a little bit further. I didn't cut that straight when I chainsawed it. Surprise! All right, oops, there's a little guy there. This blank is cutting very nicely. I have a Supernova 2 chuck and a couple of extra sets of jaws from my G3 chuck that I had with my Delta MIDI lathe. And earlier this year, I ordered a record power SC4, but I ordered just the body because the Nova jaws will fit on that chuck. And I just wanted to have one that I could leave big jaws on and, and one I can leave small jaws on. But the Wormwood screws that came with the Nova do not fit in the record power chuck. So if I want to use wormwood screw right now, I have to use the Nova chuck, the Supernova 2. I imagine I can probably order a wormwood screw that would fit into the record power chuck, but I haven't gotten that far yet. All right, I think, I think, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut a shallow channel in the side here that I'm going to put some leather in. I don't think I want it this close to the top. I think I'm going to use this line and then I'll decide how far up I want it to go when I get that far. Got some brown medium star bond that I'm just going to put in the last little bits bits of these if I can. I'm gonna try to keep it in the cracks mostly.
I probably had enough left in this blank to core it at least once, and I just didn't even think about it until I was most of the way done hollowing it out. I got away with going back over it out at the edge after I had already removed the majority of the material. A lot of times that you do that and you end up making it worse because you get spirally chattery marks, but this was very nice to me and let me clean up that edge without giving me too much trouble. Need to make that channel just a hair deeper in order for the leather to sit down in there mostly flush. And there was much sanding. I went up to 400 and I used my Trend Air Shield Pro for that whole process, which was lovely. Uh, I wiped it off with denatured alcohol, and I am just now putting on a coat of one-pound cut shellac. Once that dries, I'm going to denib it with a white Scotch-Brite pad. I believe that that is equivalent to about 4 aught steel wool. I'm going to start out with the Axe Abrasive Sanding Paste. Then I'm going to move on to Brad Sanding Paste, which is a little bit finer. And I'm going to use Brad's Tongue Wax Finish as my top coat. So I'm going to rub on a liberal coat, rub that in a little bit, and I let it sit for, I don't know, maybe an hour or so before I came back to buff it off. I can hear one of my neighbors on his motorcycle screaming up and down the road. I think he might be practicing for how he's going to wrap it around a tree when a deer or a bear or a porcupine walks out in front of him. Ooh, 
that is pretty. Goodness. All right. So I have a couple of hides. This one, and then I have another one that was tanned in this color, plus a bunch of scraps. Uh, so I'm going to put this here with this side facing out. I used to make um, journals with wooden covers and I would use leather for the hinges and I found that just regular wood glue works really well to, to glue the leather to the, uh, to the wood. So that's what I'm going to use for this. I'm going to try really hard not to get it all over everything. But that's not necessarily my speciality. I am a messy worker. So I'm going to put the centerpiece on the spot where the crack is. So I will start about in the middle-ish on the other side of the pith. This leather is really soft and quite malleable, so it's easy to work with in, in this application. I'm able to stretch it out to meet the sides of the channel, and then when I get around to the other end, you'll see that I'm going to be able to cut the ends off and then pull them just a little bit, stretch them to make them meet. So I have a vague idea of what I'm going for here. I want kind of a rustic look. I'm kind of trying to tear the edges of the leather so that it's not a you know clean cut and it looks a little bit ragged and jagged. And then I have a brass ring that I did some antique patinas on. Well, I'm going to fiddle around with this for a little while and I will let you guys see what I come up with when I come up with something. All right, so what I'm going to do first is just try and put a hole through from the front. Getting the needle through the leather was crazy hard, so I ended up shoving it through with a plastic lid from something, and then I had to get pliers to pull it through the other side. But I managed to make it do what I needed it to do, which is just hold that ring on. I got some porcupine quills that Lori got from a roadkill porcupine in 2007, and I haven't really done anything with them yet. Um, so the important thing to know about porcupine quills is these are all live. These just came right off of the porcupine. This end is the business end, and the first 
I think they say about four millimeters is where the barbs are. And the barbs are in oriented in such a fashion that the more you work it, the deeper they go. So you do not want to get porcupine quill barbs in you. So I'm gonna just cut off the business end and snip. And I don't have any idea how Laura gathered these without getting poked, so I'll have to ask her. Unfortunately, we have a lot of porcupines in our neck of the woods, and they get hit a lot. It's very sad. I love the little porcupines. Porcupines and the possums get hit a lot. And then people run over turtles on purpose because they're jerks. Don't be a jerk. I'm using Starbond Medium Clear because what I'm hoping to do is just kind of, maybe I should do two at a time. Maybe I need to get, <laughs> maybe I need my cheater safety glasses. What did I do with them? I can't see what I'm doing. All right. Well, you guys can't see what I'm doing either. Oh, come on, little thing. Can you just behave yourself? No, oh, whatever. Whatever. We're going to just go with it. Um, move this guy up. Okay, so I'm just gonna drop there. How goes it? Oh, I don't know. It's going. I don't know if it's going well. But... So tell the people how you collect porcupine quills without getting got by them because I know to, how to cut them off to make them not get me once I've got them but how did you get them without... Well picking up a porcupine you have to grab it by the tail and make sure that all the quills are facing down yeah. and you can pick it up without gloves but as long as you pick it up by the tail with everything going you know I would use gloves yeah well don't pick up a porcupine well yeah there is that let me think so um, maybe I mean, this whole can... thing is not attached yet. I right. just am kind of playing Maybe around. you can stain it so it's not so bright. It's just very bright. It's yeah. taken away from the porcupine quills. Okay. Um, you can use like like a coffee or uh, some type of stain and just like brush it so it yellows it down a little bit. Um, I've got some dye somewhere too, some brown. Yeah. Pay no attention to all the little sawdust specks in the leather that I forgot to blow off before I took it over to take pictures of it. So just pretend that those aren't there. I really like the way this came out. I have a couple of ideas on ways to do it a little bit easier next time as far as getting the porcupine quills onto the little ring. But overall, I'm really happy with it. I think it turned out really cool. Here's your little bit of Bailey. You're very handsome, though. Oh, God. And here is your little bit of porcupine with a porcupet. And yes, that is what baby porcupines are called. They are called porcupets. And I have always, always, always wanted to see a porcupet. And then one shows up in our front yard. It's really cool. Watch her raise her quills when the dog starts barking. Whoop. I mean, come on. I 
love that I live where there are porcupines and ravens and bears and foxes and all kind of things. So I will leave you this week with the adorable image of a porcupet butt as it wanders back toward the bog. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Do all those social media things. Hit that thumbs up button. And we'll see you again next time. Until then, y'all be safe out there.